Howdy, I'm Bob Terry. Welcome to the Forsaken Westerns. Up next, we have a series hosted by one of the biggest Western stars ever, and that's Randolph Scott. The title of this series is Randolph Scott, Theater of the West. The title of this episode, the only known existing episode, is Officer's Choice, and it stars Scott Brady and Paul Kelly. Sit back, relax, kick your boots up, and enjoy this, and we'll see you after the show. Eagle to find that truth. His name's Will Young, U.S. Ranger. That's him now. years old. That's a long time ago. There used to be a gang operating around the Crooked River County at that time. Hard, wild bunch. Their last job was a train holdup. There was six. Two died on the spot, shot to ribbons. The rest scattered. After a time, we rounded up three, but one, the last one, just disappeared. What's the name on the warrant? Arlo Brandt. Ever see him? Not me. Just have a description. Six foot two, gray eyes, weighs about 190, dark hair. And he carries a nippling shotgun scar on the right elbow. Kind of hard to tell about a scar like that, you know? Men don't usually wear their sleeves rolled up. True, it's a slim trail. Daddy, I want my supper. Pretty soon, honey. Mommy will have it all ready. You married? I missed that somewhere along the road. That makes a difference. I can see that. Heard you were a family man, McLean, and a straight shooter. Thanks for your confidence, Chum. Records of this office will be at your disposal. 
So will I, if that's any help to you. Thanks. I'll be around for a spell. Nothing in particular in mind yet. But I'm a great hand to drift and let things happen. That bunch get a good haul off that train? Not a dime. Got them all. Except this all old brand. He was lucky. Maybe not so lucky, you know. Considering what must be on his mind. Five years is a long stretch of time. Railroads don't forget. Correct. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, little lady. Goodbye. Daddy, what are you waiting for? That's a good question, honey. Let's go home, huh? See if Mommy's got the answer. Get your shawl here. I've even stopped thinking about it. It all seemed like a bad dream. What are we going to do? Only one thing left to do, honey. No, Cliff. Not run away again. It's been five years since we've stopped running. We've made a new life. This is our home. Mommy! Yes, dear? I'll put the dishes on the table, Mommy. All right, dear, but be careful. They're hot. We can't run now, with Lenny May. Ah, you're right, Mary. We just have to trust to our luck a little longer. Cliff, that man, does he have any suspicion of you? I don't know. Just has a general description. Fit most anybody. But he's the kind of a man that'll ferret things out, Mary. Like what? You've done nothing wrong. Well, you're the sheriff. The whole town respects you. Yeah. That's just where I made my mistake, running for sheriff. I should have stayed in the background. Why, anybody in town can give him all the information on me he needs. The day we arrived here, how long we've been here. And what else? Don't you see, Cliff? There's nothing more he can find out. Mary, he does know that the man he's looking for has a bullet wound in his right arm. He must have noticed I carry my gun on the left side. Then why don't you carry a gun on both sides while he's in town? Assistant, sir. I'd like to get some information about your town, if there's no objection. Oh, no objection. <laughs> the minute I'll get you the file. <laughs> How far back would you like to delve? About five years. That's just yesterday's news. <laughs> Our files go back before the Civil War. <laughs> kind of dilapidated like I am. <laughs> That's our present sheriff. Cliff McLean, him and Mary. Cliff McLean and Mary came out from the Dakotas five years ago. Came a long way from home. Did he ever make a trip back? No, folks all dead, he said. And Cliff did so well at the store that old man Kelby practically retired let him run it. And then we organized town band. Oh, just a minute, I, I think I've got a, a photograph. Let's come over here. Lost 
the Eagle and Cowboy Band. Only Cowboy Band is sex in the state. Him there with the bass drum, that's our sheriff. Only picture we ever had. Mighty shy about having his picture taken. Left-handed man? No, I wouldn't say that. I notice he's holding the drumstick in his left hand. Well, you're right. Well, now I recollect he did beat the drum with his left hand. Does everything else with his right. Of course, he shoots with his left. <laughs> beats the drum with his left and shoots with his left. <laughs> I never would have thought that. <laughs> Ah, that's some of Red Brigade's gang. I wonder where the sheriff don't do something about that bunch. As long as they operate outside the county, there's nothing he can do. You know as well as I do, the other side of the pass is outlaw country by unanimous agreement. It won't be long before Bragg and forgets all about that county line. Join you in a cup of tea. You get down off that horse and you'll never get back up again. Oh, no, I'm beginning to see where you're getting these crazy ideas about quitness. Bragg will be at the saloon in half an hour. Don't keep your boss waiting. Half hour ought to give you plenty of time with this hair slinger. Where are you? Ah! Getting so cluttered up with strangers, we ain't got no more elbow room. This is gonna be a bad day for Buck Rose. He's only carrying out his boss's orders. Bragan's never going to let you quit, Jim. His pride won't let him. I heard him brag about it right here in this restaurant. Nobody quits Red Bragan. No? Well, I just did. I'm gonna tell him to his face. Jim Bragan's dangerous. There's only one thing for us to do. Get out of town right now. Are you crazy? I'm frightened, Jim. Let's get out before something awful happens. Look, running away won't stop, Reagan. They could always find us. No, sir. I'm gonna make a stand right here. And he might as well know about it now. Jim, please. You're making a mistake. I made a mistake when I joined up with him. That I admit. But I don't have to pay for it for the rest of my life. Jim! I'm sorry, sir. I'll take your order. Where are you going? That's my business. Just leave me alone. I haven't broken any laws yet. Take it easy. Nobody said anything about breaking laws. Just want to talk to you. I got no time for talking. I got a problem to straighten out. And I mean to start right now. Look, I'm an old hand at this sort of thing, Jim. I'll see you keep your self-respect. Walk around a spell, boy. Analyze what you ever get. What do you say, Jim? All right, I'll string along with what you say for a while. But I'm not ducking any showdown. Smart man, yes, Sheriff. Like the way he eased the boy away from that saloon and its consequences. Sheriff McLean's a wonderful man. I don't know what this town would do without him. Morning, you yeah. Nice day, huh? So far. Join me? Thank you. Just call me, please, buddy. Thank you for helping Jim, Mr. McLean. If Bragan would only let him alone. Seems that bad ties are harder to break than good ones. It'll work out somehow. As long as you stick by him. I will. I told him I'd go any place with him right now. Running away isn't always the answer, Betty. Though it's generally the first thing we think of. I'll see if your eggs are ready. Anything I can do for you, young? How long has this Red Bragan been around these parts? Ooh, about a year, more or less. 
You figure Bregan's your man? I figure the man I'm looking for is much too smart to live in outlaw country. There's all O'Brien's brains. Cut clear of the bad crowd, stay clear. Suppose he turned on it. In that case, he probably amounts to something in his community. The man has got guts enough to straighten himself out, seldom plays second fiddle. But he's still got a bill to pay. Breaking on through being hounded. I'm gonna be let alone. I'll be back in an hour with Breaking. And we'll fix you for good. Tell Breaking not to carry this matter any further. Since when did you start giving orders to Breaking? As of now. I will not have Jim Lane badgered. He wants to break away, nothing's going to stop him. The man's got a right to change his course. We'll be back in an hour. If I was you, I'd stay in my office with the door locked. If you come to my office, if you don't, I'll have to lock you up. Why don't you run that bunch in? Much as I'd like to, my hands are tied, young. They don't operate in the county. Folks expect me to use a light rein unless they overstep their bounds. Daddy, I brought these flowers for you. You did? But where can I put them? Well, honey, I'm afraid we don't have anything to put them in. So why don't you run down to the general store and pick out a nice vase that'll match the flowers. Here, here's some money. Thank you. Off Thank you go. Thank you, Daddy. I'll pick out a nice one. I just want you to know I took your advice this morning, Sheriff, and it didn't work. If you can't face a problem, you can't lick it. All right, Jim. Go over to the saloon and wait there. Nobody can accuse you of being afraid. That's where Bregan will expect you to be, and that's where you'll be. Now, listen, Sheriff, nobody fights my battle. Jim, do as I told you. And don't draw your gun. two guns myself. Hard enough for me to draw fast with my right hand. Never did understand the left hand draw. It helps sometimes. I'll be around if you need me. Much obliged. who was sworn to uphold the law. His job is to ride down this wanted man, all old Bryant, and no compromise. Even now, the old lawman knows only too well what that might mean. As for Sheriff McLean, time seems to be running out. Sheriff's a fool to make an issue of it. Who the heck is Jim Lane that he should drag Cliff into this? Well, it had to be sooner or later. I disagree. Reagan's been minding his own business up until now. And Cliff can't cut it against Bregan alone, let alone his whole gang. Maybe we ought to give Cliff some help. What? And start a real war? No, sirree. It's better to have one with it than a whole town full of them. He's doing it just to help young Wayne break away from that gang of outlaws. McLean. 
McLean. Sheriff McLean, break it. to carry this Jim Lane business any further, Bregan. Come on, speak up. Don't whisper. What makes you think I'd do what you told me to do? Let it ride. Do not interfere with Jim Lane. Oh, feeling your authority, eh? Don't you know I give orders, not take them? In this case, you'll take them. And if I don't? I'll wait for you to draw. <laughs> He's dead. Pick him up and take him with you. When you ride into this town, you will obey the law just as everybody else does. came looking for. He's dead. Paul O'Brien died in the street of Lost Eagle today. With a bullet in his heart put there by Sheriff McLean. You mean Bregan was all O'Brien? That's how my report will read. The record is closed. So the officer made his choice, and 
who's to say it wasn't the right one? Hope you enjoyed tonight's story and that you'll join us again next week for another exciting one on The Theater of the West. See you. The nearest I can figure, this was produced sometime in 1955 or very early 1956. And what amazing stars, a very young Mimi Gibson and Kathy Downs and, and Olin Howland and that great bad guy, Ted DeCorsa. Thank you for joining us for this almost lost, almost forgotten television treasure. We hope to see you again on down the trail here at the Forsaken Westerns. My name's Bob Terry. Have a great day. <laughs>